Kia ora. Um, at this year's forum, we've talked a lot about the use of AI in portfolios, which is an indicator that this topic is on all of our minds. In the next few minutes, I'd like to take you on a small part of my journey and show you a few things I've discovered along the way. So to be honest, up to about early 2022, artificial intelligence did not really feature highly on my radar for portfolios. It had always been more of a technical topic. And yes, lots of cool things could be done with it, but it also always seemed to be very daunting. This all changed when generative AI, and in particular large language models, became easily accessible. As you can see here from the diagram though, they are just a teeny tiny part of what is considered artificial intelligence. But they sure pack a punch and have taken the world by storm. So in late 2022, right after coming back from a hacker conference, I learned about ChatGPT. I actually think that one of the presenters did make a reference to having used a GPT to create some content, but at that time that didn't really mean much to me at all. But it changed very quickly. My social media feeds were suddenly flooded with everything generative AI, and it became very difficult to keep up with all the news. I created my own very rudimentary chatbot in Poll and then discovered Riff by Dr. Leticia Predescavagnaro that we explored in yesterday's workshop. That's when it really clicked for me and I got excited about AI and how it could support learning, in particular, of course, with portfolios. We also did not get around to discussing the topic in the Able Digital Ethics Task Force either. And so we've done quite a bit of work in that now over the last year. But I'm always um, thus in 2023 and 2024 up to now. Um, my time has been filled quite a bit with organizing webinars around the topic of AI in portfolio practice, conversations, the task forces, draft AI paper, and my own further explorations. But I'm always keeping our digital ethics principles from evil in mind. We developed them before even considering AI as a topic and have tested them over the last year against uses of AI and decided not to create another principle as AI impacts pretty much all of them. For me though, the focus would be on four principles, data responsibility, technology and usability, respecting author rights and reuse permissions, and last but not least, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging and decolonization, DEIBD. Taking the data responsibility principle, for example, in the case of ChatGPT, did you know that you are responsible not just for what you put in, but also what the AI puts out based on your prompt, even though OpenAI openly acknowledges that it may be incorrect? Another area that is often a concern with generative AI is its inherent bias that disadvantages especially underrepresented communities and enforces existing stereotypes because not everybody is yet at the table of these large organizations that spend enormous mon amounts of money on AI. So earlier today, I did, and early in the presentation, I did mention that I had a closer look of at RIF. I did that for a few reasons. It is backed by research, the data is not used for training, it is very easy to set up, and educators have access. On the flip side, data does go to the US and you can't choose your large language model. Therefore, you need to weigh up if that is a tool you could use. I did decide consciously that I wanted to experiment with it, but these disadvantages were always on my mind. This is what the educator interface looks like where you set up your bot. You give it a name, an introduction sentence, and then your first question. And that's it. Nothing more is needed. You can provide additional background information that the bot shall use in its responses if you like, so it can keep that in mind. Up to that point, I had only done small tests in Riff. Therefore, I set myself the task to reflect week daily for two weeks, up to 10 minutes each to become more familiar with the tool and really experience it. What did I find after those two weeks? Well, 
Riff always asked questions. It never attempted to give an answer like other chatbots and thus never took me down the rabbit hole of disappearing somewhere. It did take me deeper into my reflections because it continued asking questions patiently. It was also context aware. On the other hand, after having used it for a few days in a row, it felt kind of a little bit repetitive. It also never stopped asking questions. So when I ended my reflection sessions, not answering the last question, I often felt bad and wanted to apologize profusely. Lastly, you can't decide on the storage location. So that's what's taken me up to now and into my last running phase, um, because that'll take me into the next year where there will be more conversations and also more direct experiments and explorations to which I look forward. Riff was really only a start. Two days ago at the EPEPLA workshop, projects were presented that research the use of AI for text and also multimodal analysis of portfolio content uh, for assessment and feedback purposes, and also use it to create fabulous visualizations of aggregated content. Way more to explore. So if you are interested in progressing the thinking around AI and the field of digital ethics, in the context of portfolio practice, I'd like to invite you to join us in year six of the Able Digital Ethics Task Force, for which we are still taking applications. Be part of the conversation to have your voice heard.